Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, October 12th, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also, ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel. And just a little disc uh, disclaimer, I had a comment uh, in the last video about uh, a minute and 20 worth of advertising. And I just wanted to say that I'm not advertising, and if I am, I'm advertising my own work, which I don't think is you know, uh, immoral or anything. I think it'd be pretty logical to promote your work if you're going to put 10 to 12 hours in it. So if you, you know, obviously if I do that for new listeners, uh, and, uh, you know, if you're an older listener, a usual, uh, audience subscriber, usually you can just skip right through it. Um, but if you're a new listener, it may help you navigate through, uh, the different features in that, that, uh, that I have for GGN on different sites. Um, but if you're if if you don't have enough time, then just skip through it. But if you can't take two seconds to skip through, you know, to get to a minute twenty, then uh, uh, you know GGN may not be for you. Um, but besides that, thank you for joining me. I'm gonna keep moving here. Uh, there's a poll and all that. You can check that out. All right, I kind of finished up on the War of Terror, the Reign of Terror, and on sovereignty in the last uh, video, and I'll just kind of finish it up here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it says U.S. builds drone bases in Africa, Arab Peninsula. It says report. This is from September 1st, 2011. U.S. is building a ring of secret drone bases in the Horn of Africa and Arabian Peninsula as part of an aggressive campaign against Al Qaeda affiliates in Somalia and Yemen. The Washington Post reported on Wednesday, citing U.S. officials, uh, one base for the unmanned aircraft is being established in Ethiopia. <laughs> so instead of going over there to actually uh, carry out a humanitarian uh, mission, such as the one that they're supposedly, the, supposedly there for, i.e. a famine for Somalia, no, they're going to go into another famine-stricken place um, uh, that's, you know, where people are starving and that, and they're going to carry out another humanitarian mission, but instead they're going to have unmanned drone aircraft uh, killing people, just like in Somalia, right? Um, so that will kind of... Uh, lead into these next stories. U.S. drones fly from secret Kenya bases. U.S. drones are flown to southern Somalia from U secret U.S. bases in neighboring Kenya. Press TV reports quoting a Somali official. He also said that there are secret U.S. jails in Kenya where hundreds of young people captured in Somalia are being held. And uh, it says here, increased number of its attacks by unmanned surveillance aircraft in Somalia. Many civilians have died as a result. And um, let's see here. I think we're going to leave it at that. Two U.S. drones crash in South Somalia. This is from the 12th. Uh, two unmanned aerial vehicles operated in or by the U.S. military have crashed in the southern Somalia near the border with Kenya. Press TV reports. And you go there and check that out. But a Somali government official speaking on condition of anonymity, you always have a problem pronouncing that word, told Press TV that the American remote control drones went down close uh, to uh, Dubli Town. And, uh, and look at this. It says here, exclusive computer virus hits U.S. drone fleet. So maybe that's how they're taking them down. It says here, and just, you know, you see these, all these people kind of just sitting here. He's kind of just sitting back with a little joystick and, you know, they got their water, their Red Bull, and this is official military business. But it's like a, you know, it's not a video game. They're killing people. They're killing people. And many of them are just innocent bystanders. And it takes this human element where they can just kind of sit back like they're, you know, at their computer desk and watching a movie. No. <laughs> I mean, this is what, this is why, like, I talk about, it's, you know, it's like Star Trek, you know. I don't know if it's War of the Asherons, whatever it was, the episode. But, you know, where sort of people walk into these little incinerators and kill themselves, and they have these fake wars. Oh, oh you know, a uh, war was launched, you know, uh, a theoretical uh, war was launched, and we do have a casualty. You've been deemed a casualty. It was so funny, too, when the dude goes and says, you've been deemed a casualty. <laughs> and then they had the, the, even the diplomat who's trying to, like, uh, uh, make peace with them even becomes a, quote, casualty and has to go into the, uh, into the little incinerator to kill himself to keep the numbers down. Uh, but really, the point of the, the what I was trying to make was that the reason they did that, the the uh, the logic behind it, was so that they could avoid a real war. But like you know, uh, Captain Kirk was saying in there, uh, Shatner, that you know, in a real war, real people die. There's blood. There's guts on the ground and everywhere. You know, it costs a lot of money, and people tend to avoid it when it's like that. 
and that's you know when you have it like this it just makes it easier you take the human element out of it now it's just these people are now machines they're just part of this machine part of the matrix so i think i made my point there u.s had every legal right to kill uh al laki former attorney general says so he said on tuesday the government had every legal right to kill him whether he was an american citizen or not once he embarked on a course making war against the united states and he was a target of a CIA drone attack in September that killed him and another in, uh, in Yemen. Now, I, want, I never said this in the last video because I've just been like had a lot on my mind getting back to uh, going with these videos. And, uh, but I just want to mention he may have been just like bin Laden, another asset that was taken out. And, um, and the thing was is that uh, bin Laden had been, you know, supposedly reportedly dead for the last eight years so it's kind of a joke and you know to everybody that knows is in the know that bin laden's been dead for seven years possibly of kidney failure and here they are saying that oh we dumped his body at, at sea you know what i mean and we killed him in pakistan and the people in pakistan that were neighbors said he, he didn't even live there you know so it's just you can tell it's just the lies are very blatant and obvious and if you do have some common sense you can kind of just see it uh, but a lot of people don't, and they do. They will say, "Let's we got to go bomb Yemen now." You know what I mean? They just don't know the facts. They don't know the backstory, like Somalia or Haiti, and it sucks because they are the ones that support this quote democracy or this dictatorship or this government. And um, either way, uh, what, what I was going to say was with Bin Laden, this guy he probably wasn't even ye in Yemen. You know what I'm saying? They're saying he was in Yemen. He probably wasn't even in there. He may have been dead already. Who knows? But it says here, a secret U.S. memo made legal case to kill a citizen. It says here, Obama administration or the Obama regime secret legal mem memorandum that opened the door to uh, killing uh, this individual, Anwar al Alaki, the American-born radical Muslim cleric hiding in Yemen, uh, found that uh, it would be un or lawful only if it were feasible to take him alive, according to people who have the, read the document. So, oh, and so then that's kind of their little disclaimer, their black, their little loophole, is that oh, we didn't mean to kill him. You know what I mean? Like when they kill civilians all the time. Oh, we didn't mean to kill him. U.S. killed uh, Alwaki for what he said. Number of U.S officials have recently confirmed the existence of a secret panel of senior government officials that can order the killing of american citizens without any judicial oversight so you go in there and check that out what they're talking about i got to keep moving i have a lot of articles to cover still and they're very very interesting just been stacking up for the past weeks it says here family of al Qaeda propagandist uh, issues statement so it says here the north carolina family of um al Lockheed, basically who we just talked about uh, said he was a law-abiding U.S. citizen. He was assassinated by the uh, American government, and Ron Paul uh, also used that word that he was assassinated. And that, of course, opens up the door for people like returning vets and Marines who don't exactly like what they were fighting and killing and, and watching their brothers die for. Um, for what? So you know you can get come back and be uh, on a terrorist watch list because you you know you put in a slip to you know for a concealed carry license or something or you start talking about what you saw over there and the hypocrisy of So here's another patsy uh, accused Christmas Day bomber pleads guilty to all accounts uh, FBI came in and said that he was basically an asset. They even referred to him as an asset, an FBI asset. He was part of an investigation. He was trying to take down Al Qaeda. Um, but he, you know, he Basically, he said he admitted all counts to, to being guilty, which is pretty dumb, but, you know, who knows? They probably broke a deal to him because he's working for them, right? He was never meant to a bomb to go off. It was meant to do what? It was to tie it to this country, Yemen, and I covered it. When I covered this on that Christmas, what was that, a year ago, two years ago now? Man, time flies. I said that this was to open the door to go into Yemen. Now, here we are a year, a year two years later. New operation, new theater is Yemen and Somalia, basically the Gulf of Aden. So they got to take him out, and he must got a deal or something. Terror suspect accused of trying to hit FBI agent. So, uh, yeah, it basically it's pretty crazy. Said a Michigan man uh, suspected of supporting terrorist group held on allegations. He tried to crash into the car of an FBI agent who was following him as part of a heightened security for the 10th anniversary of September 11 attacks. So it says he was under surveillance because of his suspected uh, terrorist links, according to FBI affidavit. And, of course, this is Michigan, just like Indiana. Um, 
you know, I'm a promoter of a stateless society, but I do understand how there's going to be uh, militias, and if you do believe in a constitution or articles of confederation to, you know, basically confeder uh, confederate states of America, then you may you may want to have stuff like this and uh, militias, and that's why I, I was trying to make that case uh, two years ago that if you are in that militia, you need to be careful because you will be considered a terrorist, you know, a returning vet or not. And a lot of them are in Michigan and Indiana, Ohio, Wisconsin, and uh, that's where a lot of them come from, and uh, like Arizona and that. So, uh, moving on here, Israeli army replicates war call up for an offensive drill in order to test its readiness for possible conflicts. I wonder what those possible conflicts may be. This uh, stupid crap about Iran's uh, uh, taking out a Saudi uh, uh, official. Artisite supporters in Haiti mark coup anniversary. So, I've covered this guy, uh, President John Bertrand Artisite. Uh, the people held a rally for the 20th, 20th anniversary of a military coup that toppled the two time leader. And, of course, that was what CIA backed, the U.S. backed coup to take him out and put in uh someone else that uh you know that uh doesn't support the people this guy artisai did support the people he did care for the people and uh i think he was a good person i didn't live there on uh personally but so many reports uh uh and and articles and um and just facts out there that you can check for yourself that that he really was the haitian's person that's why he's wasn't allowed he was barred from the country in exile but they put someone like this this guy who had ties with the army and the police and has his own little nightclub haiti's president plans a new army so see they get their guy in there and they get oh they're haitians uh new president seeking to restore his country's disbanded army and you think it's going to be used to like defend invaders like the united nations <laughs> and the red cross uh, from bringing in uh, uh cholera and raping their soldiers and stuff like that no, it's not. It's going to beat and enslave their people even more. So those poor Haitians, like I said, they can't get a break, man. Just like Somalis. Breaking new evidence shows Hillary is a mastermind behind uh, the fast and... F and finishing up here, we have Mexico, U.S. shared details to foil, foil ambassador plot, which was probably a bunch of bullshit anyway. So you just know that this is all bullshit. And this was the what? Oh, do U.S. and Mexico and Canada sharing intelligence, no borders, the North American Union. Then we have this. I warned uh, people about before zombie training. OWS Atlanta turns into, or Operation Wall Street Atlanta turns into collective hypnosis, one voice weirdness. And he says here, when a large group is caught on film engaging in a weird sort of one voice hypnotic chanting ritual that characterizes the key principles of both communism and so interesting the whole point of this experience is to eliminate the individual mind and train everyone to think and say and do exactly what they are told to do by a quote leaderless leader who is really a mind control manipulator and that's what mind control is in my own definition is that it's when people think that they're acting on their own um uh, will or or its own um, decision making process when really when they think it's in the best interest for them and it's coming from them when really it's coming from an outside source that's going to benefit more than the person so that's what I believe my <laughs> And, and they have a whole script here uh, as a leader. We have someone here, and then the zombies. We have someone here. They literally repeated everything word for word. So like I said, be careful in that will Occupy Wall Street. It really does seem to be turning into anti-capitalism. Anti kind of more of a communistic or dictatorship, which, you know, like we're not already in. We are in a scientific dictatorship, but uh, they're trying to, do, uh, you know, they're just uh, edging things up. So anyways, a reporter incites DC riot to write about, that's right, that individual that infiltrated a group, uh, Mr. Provocateur, is changing his story now. Homeland Security moves forward with pre-crime detection. So internal uh, Department of Homeland Security indicates controversial program designed to predict whether a person will commit a crime is already being tested on some members of the public voluntarily. FBI to launch nationwide facial recognition service by mid-January uh, that will allow local Local police to identify unknown subjects. Army tracking plan, drones that never forget a face, so they'll be able to see your face from a drone, uh, and eventually they'll be bombing your little apartment complex here in America with a drone strike, and the people next door will keep flipping their burgers like it didn't even happen. VeriSign demands website takedown powers, so now that uh, the, basically the database of all .com internet addresses wants power to shut down non-legitimate domain names. Hmm, when asked. 
Then we have California governor protects warrantless cell phone searches. Wall Street Journal changes privacy policy to track users browsing data without. This is GGN.